I would note that we're just doing opening statements today, so we're, and there's a little engagement downtown at the White House that I know members are going to want to go to, so we're going to get started. The committee will come to order, and the chair recognizes himself for an opening statement. Today we convene our eighth and final full committee markup of the year. We've had many successes, and I'm pleased to report that four out of the last ten laws signed by the President were, in fact, products of the Energy and Commerce Committee. And today we look forward to building on that bipartisan success as we continue our efforts to create jobs, protect the public in our communities, and modernize government for the innovation era. First, we'll continue our proud efforts this Congress to improve public health. H.R. 3527. The Poison Center Network Act would reauthorize funding for our nation's poison control centers. The issue is of particular importance to me as I helped lead the successful effort a decade ago. Critical member of our communities, the centers are always on call 24-7, providing a lifeline when one is needed most. Centers also help our health care system save money as many of these crisis calls can avert a costly visit to the ER and they are a public-private success story with federal funds providing only a small portion of the Poison Center's budget. The committee will also consider H.R. 1098, the Traumatic Brain Injury Reauthorization Act, which would address a problem that affects millions of Americans, including veterans and children. This bill would assist states in developing and expanding service delivery capacity for individuals with a traumatic brain injury, as well as authorize funding for important tracking and prevention activities at the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. The toll that brain injuries take on patients and their families cannot be overstated, and this bill seeks to alleviate that burden and further provides an opportunity for recovery. I'd also note that although we announced H.R. 1281, the Newborn Screening Lives Reauthorization Act for possible consideration, colleagues on both sides of the aisle continue to work on that bill and will look forward to considering it in the new year and not today. The committee will next consider H.R. 724 to remove an unnecessary and outdated requirement for auto dealers to provide certification of emission standards compliance for new light-duty motor vehicles. Clean Air Act measures already ensure that new vehicles offered for sale comply with the standards, and the EPA no longer enforces that requirement. So this is a simple way that we can cut red tape and lower burdens for job creators. We'll also consider bipartisan legislation that aims to strengthen our relationship between the U.S. and Israel on energy development and deployment. By amending the Energy Independence and Security Act of 2007, the legislation will encourage increased collaboration between the two countries and expand U.S.-Israel cooperative programs to include natural gas projects. Finally, the committee will consider two bills related to the communications and technology. Reforming the FCC process has been the subject of significant work in the sub Subcommittee on Communications and Technology over the last three years. The amendment in the nature of a substitute that will be offered by Chairman Walden and Ranking Member Eshoo is the culmination of many months of work by members and staff to find common ground for an approach that will make the FCC a stronger and more accountable agency. I hope that the committee will favorably report the bill and we can move this bill to the Senate where it and its companion legislation, the unanimously passed FCC Consolidated Reporting Act, can be swiftly brought to the floor. Lastly, the committee will consider H.R. 3674, the Federal Spectrum Incentive Act, another example of the kind of bipartisan work that can move a good idea forward. This bill is an innovative approach that will give government agencies a fi financial incentive to continue the hard work of making ever more efficient use of the public airwaves. Bringing more spectrum to auction to fuel our national need for mobile broadband is not only good for the country's bottom line, it will continue to produce jobs and fuel our national economy. We have much to be proud of this past year and our bipartisan work has made a difference. I want to thank the members and staff for their tireless efforts and I look forward on building that record of success even stronger as we vote on these uh, tomorrow. And at this point, I would recognize uh, uh, my friend, the uh, ranking member of the Health Subcommittee, Mr. Pallone from New Jersey, for an opening statement. Thank you, Chairman Upton. This afternoon, the Subcommittee on Health reported unanimously two important public health bills, 
that meaningfully address the public health needs of our communities in the areas of poison control and traumatic brain injury. Both bills would continue programs that have a successful record in prevention, surveillance, and treatment. H.R. 1098, which would reauthorize the traumatic brain injury programs at HHS, which have also been critical to our research efforts on TBI, or traumatic brain injury, and H.R. 3527, the Poison Center Network Act, would continue the important grants to our nation's 56 poison centers that are responsible for helping to reduce the number of deaths and the severity of illnesses caused by poisoning. I support both bills, and I look forward to their floor consideration in the new year. I'd also like to discuss the two energy bills before the committee today, both of which I support. H.R. 724 will remove an antiquated regulation from the Clean Air Act that requires auto dealers to provide a certificate with new vehicle purchases showing that the vehicle meets federal emission standards. All new vehicles meet these requirements, and EPA no longer enforces the regulation. The second energy bill before us will renew and improve upon the U.S. energy development collaboration with Israel. There is much to gain from the U.S. and Israel working together on mutual energy goals, and this legislation will allow the U.S. to continue engaging with Israel on important energy issues for the next decade. And lastly, I support both telecom bills under consideration today, the amendment to H.R. 3675, the FCC Process Reform Act of 2013, represents a bipartisan compromise. I want to thank uh, Chairman Walden and Ranking Member Eshoo for their work on this bill. I think we all agree that bringing additional transparency and predictability any agent to any agency is a good thing. In addition, H.R. 3674, Federal Spectrum Incentive Act of 2013, creates new incentives for federal agencies to relinquish underutilized spectrum for commercial mobile broadband services. And in today's ever-evolving broadband-saturated world, it's critical we continue to allow for innovation and access in this space. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Chairman yields, <coughs> Chairman yields back. Chair would recognize the uh, Chairman of the Health Subcommittee, Mr. Pitts, for an opening statement for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, today, the committee is marking up two public health bills that are important to keeping Americans healthy and safe. H.R. 1098, the Traumatic Brain Injury Reauthorization Act, introduced by Representative Pascrell, and H.R. 3527, Poison Center Network Act, introduced by Representative Terry. These bills will help protect Americans against medical problems that have devastating consequences. First, the traumatic brain injury, uh, TBI, uh, affects children and adults, athletes, and soldiers. More than 3.17 million Americans live with a disability that resulted from a TBI. H.R. 1098 will provide needed services to help these patients and the prevention and surveillance work done at the Centers for Disease Control keeps the public and providers aware of TBI research that leads to early diagnosis and treatment. Research at the National Institutes of Health improves the understanding of TBI and identifies treatments that will improve lives. And programs available at the Health Resources and Services Administration help families to better care for their members who suffer from a TBI. Second, poison control centers offer successful and cost-effective services to Americans at risk of being poisoned. Accidental poisoning is the second leading cause of unintentional injury death in the United States. H.R. 3527, the Poison Center Network Act, provides support for 57 poison centers in the United States. This funding enables centers to operate and maintain a nationwide toll-free phone where Americans can call for immediate help. In addition, it supports a media campaign to inform about the dangers of poisonous substances and how to get immediate help. The Health Subcommittee examined these bills in a legislative hearing on November 20th, 2013, and favorably reported both out with unanimous bipartisan support of the subcommittee earlier today. And I urge all of my colleagues to support these bipartisan common sense pieces of legislation. And I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Chair would recognize the gentlelady from California, Ms. Eshu, for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, today's um, markup demonstrates that when uh, our respective sides uh, work together, uh, we can accomplish good things for the American people, and uh, I'm very, very pleased 
uh, about uh, the work that the uh, telecommunications uh, subcommittee uh, has uh, done. Let me begin with the FCC Process Reform Act, a bill uh, which uh, this committee has debated in various forms for nearly three years. That's a long time to be talking about one thing. Uh, the amendment and the nature of the substitute, which uh, Chairman Walden and I will offer tomorrow, is a bipartisan compromise aimed at giving the FCC flexibility while promoting uh, openness, transparency, and accountability. Um, uh, I appreciate the inclusion of the bipartisan bicameral uh, FCC Collaboration Act of 2013, H.R. Uh, 539, but I am somewhat disappointed that this provision will not take effect immediately upon enactment. Uh, for years, current and uh, former FCC commissioners, Republicans, Democrats, have called on Congress uh, to pass uh, sunshine reform. Uh, for members that are not members of our subcommittee, this would allow commissioners to talk to each other. I mean, imagine they can't talk to each other. So, uh, you know, I mean, I, how can they conduct business? They can't talk to each other. So I think a delay in the implementation is the delay of a much needed reform. Uh, so as the bill makes its way through the House and hopefully the Senate, I hope that this provision uh, will be changed. Uh, I also want to applaud uh, Chairman Wheeler for his commitment to ensure a more efficient and effective FCC by initiating a 60-day review of the agency's processes and procedures. This is an important undertaking for the Commission and its recognition that every season is a season for reform. And I think that we all welcome that from the, uh, from the Chairman. I'm also uh, pleased to join my colleagues in supporting the Bipartisan Federal Spectrum Incentive Act, uh, 3674, which recognizes that to advance a 21st century spectrum policy and meet our nation's uh, growing demand for wireless broadband, uh, we have to think creatively on how we manage and relocate spectrum held by several agencies. And kudos to our colleagues, um, uh, Congresswoman Matsui and uh, Congressman Guthrie, uh, for co-chairing the working group. Uh, they've really produced something. And uh, we're all proud of that, and we salute you for the work that you've done, uh, because this is uh, so important. Um, uh, and, uh, and signifies that, there, that when you work with the agencies, you can help move them around and uh, help them meet the ends uh, uh, that, uh, that need to be met, and that is that more spectrum is freed up, especially by the uh, federal government. Uh, I'm pleased to support the other four bills that we're considering, Mr. Chairman. I won't go through them. You know what they are. I just have a fabulous statement about each, each of them and uh, happy to support them. Uh, so once again, I want to thank um, uh, not only you, Mr. Chairman of the full committee, but to uh, Greg Walden, the chairman of the subcommittee. Uh, I especially want to thank our staffs on both sides of the aisle. You know that I think you're terrific, and I'm always telling you that. And uh, uh, you're the ones that we sent, went back to and said, get back to the table, get back to the table, negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. And you did and I salute you for the job that you've done. You've more than earned your Christmas vacation. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll yield back the balance of my time. Time has expired. The Chair would recognize uh, Mr. Latta for an opening statement. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to, for holding this markup today. I am pleased we are marking up a bill I introduced, H.R. 724, along with my colleague, Congressman Gary Peters. This bill has strong bipartisan support. H.R. 724 will repeal a duplicative and necessary paperwork requirement that has been outdated by modern technology and standard vehicle warranties. Under the 1981 imposed regulation, auto dealers are required to present new, new buyers with written confirmation that new vehicles comply with Clean Air Act emissions requirements. The car buying and selling industry has undergone a number of sweeping changes since the 1980s. But most relevant to H.R. 724 is the standard use of the three-way catalytic converters and expansive new vehicle warranties. Further, the information that emission certificates provide is readily available to the consumer in a number of alternative locations included under a vehicle's hood and on the EPA's website. 
H HR 724 is simple, direct, and sends a clear message that small business owners should not be burdened with redundant regulatory requirements. This legislation eliminates a piece of paper from the new car buying process, but it represents a commitment shared by myself and the other 102 bipartisan co-sponsors that we will all benefit from a more streamlined and efficient government. I'm also pleased we are marking up another bill aimed at reducing the federal regulatory burden, the FCC Process Reform Act. This bill will initiate much needed regulatory reforms at the FCC and bring additional transparency and accountability to the agency. This too embodies the type of reasonable governance all Americans and businesses deserve. Finally, H.R. 3674, the Federal Spectrum Incentive Act, is an important step towards ensuring government's efficient use of spectrum. I am pleased with this bipartisan legislation. Look forward to continuing to work with my colleagues to identify other ways in which the federal government can use the nation's airways more efficiently to promote further investment and innovation in the wireless broadband industry. I urge my colleagues to support all these, these bills up in the markup, and I thank the chairman, and I yield back. Chairman yields back. Chair would recognize the gentleman from New York, Mr. Engel. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Last month, um, Congressman Terry and I, along with our Senate colleagues Patty Murray and, and Dick Burr, introduced the Poison Center Network Act. This legislation reauthorizes the national toll-free number, media campaign, and grant program, which have helped make poison control centers a very successful public health program for the citizens in each of our states. Uh, for example, in my home state of New York, we have two poison centers that between the two of them field over 164,000 calls a year. The New York City Poison Center found that 88 percent of all exposures to a dangerous substance occurred within someone's own residence. Many of these calls were related to the accidental ingestation of various cleaning products or detergents, but the New York City Poison Center also fielded over 2,000 calls regarding prescription painkillers last year alone. For the upstate New York Poison Center, last year 85 percent of calls were related to unintentional poisonings, 62 percent involved children under age 5, and most importantly, 82 percent could be managed over the phone and did not require a visit to a doctor or a hospital. While a visit to the emergency room can cost hundreds of dollars and a hospitalization can cost thousands, a phone call to a poison control center only costs the government around $30 which proves poison centers continue to be a smart public health investment. Uh, thank you, Chairman Upton, uh, Ranking Member Waxman, Chairman Pitts, and Ranking Member Pallone for allowing this important legislation to come before the committee today. I'd also like to thank Chairman Terry for his hard work on this legislation. This is a good bipartisan piece of legislation, and I am pleased to have had the opportunity to work on it with you. I certainly urge all of my colleagues to support this bill. And there's also another bill which I've worked for years to strengthen ties between the United States and Israel, and therefore I want to mention the U.S.-Israel Energy Cooperation Bill. We still don't have a number because the bill is newly introduced uh, in this session, but this bill amends the Energy Independence and Security Act of 2007 to deepen public and private sector cooperation between the U.S. and Israel, including expansion of a grant program to authorize support for water efficiency projects. I certainly support the effort. While I do have some jurisdictional concerns, I look forward to engaging Chairman Upton and Ranking Member Waxman in a colloquy tomorrow when the bill is brought up and to working with the Energy and Commerce Committee as well as the Foreign Affairs and Science Committees as we go forward. I, I thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. Chairman yields back. Chair would recognize the Chair of the Communications and Telecommunications uh, Subcommittee, Mr. Walden, for three minutes. And I thank the uh, Chairman of the full committee uh, for his work on all of these bills and uh, his leadership of this committee. The committee will consider two bills from our subcommittee on communications and technology, and as chairman, I'm proud of these bipartisan efforts. The first bill, the FCC Process Reform Act, is one that we've worked on for three years, uh, trying to find common ground that will actually bring real reform to the FCC. During my tenure as chairman of the subcommittee, reforming the Federal Communications Commission has been a focus of our legislative efforts. Whether it's the FCC's Consolidated Reporting Act that passed the House unanimously earlier this year or the compromise that Ranking Member Eshoo and I will offer as an amendment, our subcommittee's efforts show a bipartisan commitment to making the Commission more transparent, accountable, and efficient. 
Communications and technology represent a significant portion of our national economy, and today's action will help fuel the innovation and investment in the communications and technology sectors that continue to create American jobs. The other bill being considered from our subcommittee is sponsored by Representatives Guthrie and Matsui, who have served for the last two Congresses as our bipartisan chairs of the Federal Spectrum Working Group. Now, the Subcommittee on Communications and Technology has used working groups to give our members a chance to focus on a particular set of issues within the subcommittee's jurisdiction and to work together to generate consensus and has here produced fantastic results. Federal Spectrum Incentive Act builds upon and extends the good work this committee did in, this, in last year's Middle Class Tax Relief and Job Creation Act by combining the commercial incentive auction concept with our work to improve the Commercial Spectrum Enhancement Act. For the history of the CSEA, it has attempted to remove the disincentives in the federal agency reallocation process, but it's never really provided an incentive. H.R. 3674 would incent agencies by offering a percentage of their net auction proceeds to agencies willing to do the hard work of making their systems more efficient. I urge my colleagues to favorably report this bill and to continue working on creative ways to uh, bring additional spectrum to auction for our nation's very hungry national mobile broadband needs. I want to thank the chairman for holding today's markup. I'd also like to thank the ranking members, Waxman and Eshu, and certainly Ms. Matsui for her work in these efforts and for uh, their work on these bills. Our respective staffs have spent countless hours negotiating these pieces of legislation. Their hard work has paid off, and I thank our staffs for their work on these two bills. We can be very proud of Mr. Chairman, and with that, I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. The chair would recognize the gentlelady from California, Ms. Matsui, for three minutes for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for yielding me time. I'd like to speak in strong support of the Spectrum legislation, H.R. 3674, the Federal Spectrum Incentive Act of 2013, that Representative Guthrie and I introduced along with Chairman Weldon and Ranking Members Waxman and Eshoo. Mr. Chairman, Chairman Upton and Walden and Ranking Members Waxman and Eshoo created an Energy and Commerce Working Group tasked with finding bipartisan solutions to address our nation's looming spectrum crisis. First, the group successfully worked to provide a reasonable path for the Department of Defense to reallocate the 1755-1780 megahertz band in a responsible manner that does not jeopardize our nation's military capabilities. The Spectrum Working Group was also tasked with finding creative ways to incentivize the federal government to reallocate non-critical spectrum for commercial use. H.R. 3674 is the first of its kind bipartisan legislation that offers a new, fresh approach to spectrum management by implementing a voluntary federal spectrum incentive auction, similar to the broadcast incentive auction. The bill creates a new federal spectrum incentive auction, so incentive auction funds, so participating government agencies can access a portion of the revenue from the auctions of their relinquished spectrum. This new incentive applies to all federal agencies holding federal spectrum. Money from the fund may be used to offset sequestration. It may also be transferred and shared between federal agencies either relinquishing spectrum or made to accommodate relocating systems. Mr. Chairman, the FCC National Broadband Plan calls for 500 megahertz of new commercial spectrum in 10 years. This bill will help reach the goal of 500 megahertz in the next 10 years. Mr. Chairman, the U.S. government is the single largest spectrum user in the country. The financial incentive will provide many of the government agencies with a deal that will be hard to refuse, particularly as our nation's budget continues to shrink. I am pleased to join with Representative Guthrie on this bipartisan bill that is a win-win-win for consumers, for American ingenuity, and for the federal government. I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 3674, the Federal Spectrum Incentive Act of 2013, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman, lady yields back. Chair would recognize a gentleman from Mississippi, Mr. Harper, for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I thank you for calling this uh, markup. 
I appreciate the effort made by the committee this year to do such things as, as increase energy security, conduct oversight of Obamacare, help benefit the health and general well-being of the American public, find ways to help our manufacturers create American jobs, and protect our environment in a reasonable way that doesn't unnecessarily burden and harm our job creators. Committee staff and members have worked diligently towards these goals, and we continue that work with this markup. I believe that the bills will consider, we will consider this markup are bipartisan, common sense ways to help achieve the goals above, including others. I look forward to supporting the legislation we will consider tomorrow, and I hope my colleagues will join me. Thank you, and I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Chair would recognize the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Bill Arrakis, for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it very much, and thanks for bringing up these very important bills. Uh, the Poison Control Network Act reauthorizes funding for a national grant program for poison control centers, maintains a single national toll-free number to access local poison control centers, and provides a national media campaign to educate the public. I want to take a moment to highlight the Traumatic Brain Injury Reauthorization Act, which renews current CDC programs. This provides funds for projects to reduce the incidence of uh, traumatic brain injuries and will fund surveillance systems or registries, allowing research, researchers to track and study these conditions. As a member of the VA committee, we've done extensive work looking into these problems for our returning troops. And it's important to recognize the efforts that CDC has done alongside with DOD and VA through programs such as this. As a member of the Congressional Invisible Wounds Caucus, I've been a supporter of highlighting TBI-related issues and finding solutions to address these problems. Further, the Energy Independence and Security Act will build upon an already successful program between the United States and Israel that allows the two allies to collaborate on and share important energy uh, research and practices. This legislation will expand the program to cybersecurity, natural gas, and deep water drilling. In the coming years, our countries will be tackling the issue of cybersecurity, how to manage our natural gas surplus, and how to improve our already state-of-the-art deep water drilling technologies. The form this legislation will expand upon will ensure that we are able to build on each country's strengths. By utilizing our unique friendship for our two countries, uh, we can improve our energy security and develop types of energy that are better for the environment. I support these bills. And I look forward to passing them out uh, of committee tomorrow. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it, and I yield back. Chairman yields back. Chair would recognize the gentleman from Georgia, Dr. Gingry, for an opening statement. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for calling this markup of six different pieces of legislation that will continue tomorrow. First and foremost, I'd like to commend you for using this markup to demonstrate the broad jurisdiction of the committee. Uh, the range of issues that will be discussed will move us from public health to energy to issues at FCC. Lastly, I wanted to commend you for working in a bipartisan manner on each piece of legislation before us. Mr. Chairman, the first two of these bipartisan bills were reported back to the full committee early today by the Health Subcommittee, H.R. 1098, the Traumatic Brain Injury Reauthorization Act of 2013, would reauthorize TBI of uh, 2008, and it would continue brain injury research at the CDC in Atlanta. Unfortunately, over 3 million Americans live with a disability that was a direct result of a traumatic brain injury. This legislation is critical co to continue the ongoing TBI research and education. H.R. 3527, the Poison Center Network Act, was introduced by our colleague from Nebraska, Mr. Terry, and it would reauthorize a variety of activities related to state-based poison control centers. Specifically, this would reauthorize the national toll-free number, media campaign, and the state grant program. HHS estimate, estimates that in any given year, there are between 3 and 5 million poison exposures, of which 60 percent involve small children within the home. In the long term, this program will continue to demonstrate savings in medical spending. Mr. Chairman, as a former member of the Communications and Technology Subcommittee, I'm pleased to see H.R. 3675, the FCC Process Reform Act, before the full committee. This bill 
uh, as uh, Congresswoman Eshoo uh, mentioned earlier, is a long time in the making. For the past three years, CNT subcommittee has taken efforts to eliminate inconsistencies that plague the telecommunications industry with uncertainty. H.R. 3675 will make needed changes to the way that the FCC does their business, and I'm pleased that this is a largely bipartisan product. H.R. 3674, the Federal Spectrum Incentive Act, is designed to provide federal users a spectrum with various incentives to relinquish spectrum for commercial use. As we see the continued demand for rise, uh, or the continued demand rise for mobile broadband, this legislation will certainly assist in meeting that need. Mr. Chairman, the last two bills come from the Energy and Power Subcommittee. H.R. 724 is legislation that will eliminate an outdated requirement under the Clean Air Act that auto dealers provide the individual purchasing a new vehicle with certi certification that the vehicle meets admission standards. The Clean Air Act also stipulates now that all new vehicles comply with admission standards, thereby making that certificate obsolete. So H.R. 724 simply repeals that requirement. And the last piece of legislation before the committee, H.R. 3683, will bolster the existing relationship with Israel when it comes to energy. This legislation will encourage the intergovernmental co collaboration within a number of areas. Most importantly, this legislation shows our continued commitment to our strongest ally in the Middle East. Mr. Chairman, I support each of the bills before the committee. I ask all my colleagues to do the same, and I yield back. Gentlemen's time has expired. The chair will recognize now the gentleman from Nebraska, Mr. Terry, for an opening statement. Thank you, great chairman from the state of Michigan, or that's the chairman from the great state of Michigan. Thank you for bringing up uh, consideration of my legislation uh, that I wrote with uh, Mr. Elliot Engel, a bipartisan bill, H.R. 3527, the Poison Control Network Act. I'm proud of this important legislation, which uh, reauthorizes the National Poison Control Free Number, the Poison Control's national media campaign and the grant program from which the senators, centers receive funding. Currently, there are 56 poison centers, including one in my district, that serves the nation 24 hours a day, 365 days a, week, a year. These centers provide professional advice from physicians, nurses, pharmacists, and toxicology specialists to people calling in with questions or concerns regarding potential exposure to harmful toxins. Many of us have turned to these professionals for help, and those of us who have had benefited from this free service know the critical role these centers play as a cost-effective part of the public health continuum. In 2010 alone, over 3 million calls were received by these centers. The ability for people to call these centers means that they are getting instant expert information on what the next steps need to be at the critical moments right after they or their child or an elderly parent or even a pet has ingested something that was laying around the house or underneath the sink. Often, these phone calls saves the individual and taxpayers from a costly trip to the emergency room. This legislation makes some very minor but needed reforms to the statute, which reauthorizes the program and doesn't contain a single penny in new spending. These poison centers provide a critical service to the millions of parents, caretakers, elderly adults, and families that rely on their advice daily, and I urge my colleagues to vote in favor of H.R. 3527. I'd like to thank the Democratic lead sponsor, my friend, uh, Representative Elliot Engel from New York for his leadership, and also Dr. Burgess for lending his support and exper experience and expertise as well. I yield back. I just want to say, uh, commend you both, uh, Mr. Engel and, and you, Mr. Terry. That was a bill, as I said in my opening remarks, that I helped carry a, a decade ago, and it has uh, saved so many lives, yeah. and uh, it is something that we need to do. And you came to me early to, uh, to make sure that we get this thing moving, and I'm delighted to say that it's, uh, it's getting done. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your, for your leadership to make it bipartisan. So... Uh, the chair will now call it, uh, concludes opening states, statements. Uh, remind all my colleagues that they're able to put an opening statement into the record as a, uh, under unanimous consent. We'll now uh, call up H.R. 3527 and ask the clerk to report. 
H.R. 3527 to amend the Public Health Service Act to reauthorize the Poison Center National Toll-Free Number, National Media Campaign and Grant Program, and for other purposes. Without objection, the first reading of the bill is dispensed with, and the bill will be open for amendment at any point. So ordered. For, in, for the information of members, we are now on H.R. 3527. The committee will reconvene at 12.30 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. And I will remind members that the chair will give priority recognition to amendments offered on a bipartisan basis. So I look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow. And without objection, the committee stands in recess.